The other day I was watching Making with Marilyn as she added an image to a canvas board. And the whole time I was watching, my wheels were spinning because I was thinking about the time two weeks ago when I added an image to a canvas. Now I use sublimation fabric and I wrap the fabric around the canvas and my image turned out fantastic. And you've seen that I have some other canvases hanging up in my craft room. Well, I tried it last night with my DTF printer and it did not come out very well. So I'm, this is a 12 by 16 canvas panel. This is one of those flat panels like this and the image um, was cut off at the end. I think the colors are vibrant. I think that part looks amazing. However, you can see that it has like a white space over here and then over here it's just completely cut off. Well, I knew I wanted to try it again and that's what we are doing today. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda. And thank you so much for joining me today. As I stated, we are doing photos on canvas, but we're using the DTF printer, not the hack. I'm not using my sublimation printers. You can see them right there. I'm not using those. I'm using my regular schmegular DTF printer. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let me show you how I made my images this big and I was able to use the DTF uh, printer to put the images on these canvas panels. Let's look at the materials and we'll dive right into the software. Let's get started. The materials I use for this project include my DSV DTF printer. I used my StarCraft 12 by 15 swing away eight in one heat press that I purchased from 143 Vinyl. I used a black canvas board that is 12 by 16. I also used a white canvas board that is 12 by 16 heat resistant gloves. I use Welliser DTF film and Welliser DTF powder. I also used one sheet of parchment paper and I used a Teflon sheet. You will also need some kind of safety equipment when you are using the powder, um, the DTF powder, okay? And the ink that I'm using is the DSV ink that came with the printer, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. I am on the Canva homepage and I am using a pro account. What I'm going to do is click on custom size. And when the box opens up, I'm going to change the measurements from pixels to inches. And I am going to create a page size that matches the A3 film. For width, I am going to type in 11.7. And for height, I am going to change that to 16.9 once i do that it will open up a new document for me and that will match the page size now i have my film size basically right here and i am going to add the photo of my parents and i'm just going to resize it so that i have somewhat of a border around the photo I continued until the photo was centered. I did the same thing with my family photo. I just resized it and I made sure that there was somewhat of a border around it. To prepare the photos for downloading, I renamed them first and then I clicked the share option. And my, for my options, I selected transparent background, PNG, and I made sure that only one photo was selected. I'm in the DTG RIP software, and the first thing I'm going to do is open the file of Peter and I, I mean, um, of my family and I, and it is this photo right here, and I think this is a fair size, and I'm still going to go ahead and rotate this. I just think it'll look better if I do that. So I'm going to go to, not rotate, but mirror this. 
and I am going to get this printed. You can see what my settings are right here. I have um, the same settings for every single image. So I'm going to go to File, Print. I'm going to uncheck white plus color. I'm going to select one copy. I'm going to turn on the white plus color and I'm going to select print. I'll do the same thing when it's time for the second image. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. So I have the lid open so you can see how the belt moves back and forth. But what's most important is that white layer of ink that comes out right there on the top. So you get the color ink down first and then that white layer on top. Now I'm going to remove the film from the printer, put on my gloves, I'm going to start to apply the powder. And I'm also going to get the next image prepared for printing. I'm going to speed that part up. Right now I have the image of my family and I uh, curing under the heat press. I did set the heat press for 345, but it's on 343 degrees for 20 seconds. And I'm just going to let it sit there for a little while longer. In the background, you probably hear the other image and it is printing out. So this is what it looks like. It's just black. And according to this paper, it is... 100% cotton, okay? So I'm pretty sure the image is cured, as cured as it's going to be. And I am going to just remove it. Now it did not print all the way to the bottom. I'm not sure what's going on with that. See down here at the very bottom, it didn't go all the way down, but I think the image came out very nice. <laughs> and I'm super excited about this. Okay, so I am going to pre-press this canvas for about 10 seconds, maybe not even 10, maybe five. Okay, the size of this heat press is 12 by 15. Okay, I think 10 seconds is plenty. I'm using this heat press because it's long and my 15 by 15 is a square shape and I need the rectangular shape for these canvas. Okay, oh, this does have a lot of moisture in it. You can, I don't know if you can tell by looking at that. See that, that's, a, that's moisture. Let's press that one more time. just to be on the safe side. All right, I'm going to move to the other side and we will get this pressed. I'm going to do my best to center this. should have cut that bottom part off. I think that looks good right there. All right, and I'm going to cover this with Teflon. I'm not going to use any tape. I think it's fine. And I do have this on heavy pressure. I can adjust it a little bit more. And I'm going to press this for 20 seconds. That was a fast 20 seconds, but let's see.
It looks so good already. Let me calm myself down. Let me calm myself down. Did it press up here? I did not get a good press up at the top. So I am going to press that again. I'm going to try not to overdo it, but I definitely feel like I did not get enough of the press up there. Maybe I'll turn it this way. So I'm not pressing the, the whole thing again. Even though I'm still pressing half of it, I'll press the other half again too for 10 seconds maybe. Pressing that bottom half. Now I'm going to let this cool down completely. Just move it over here to the side, holding it like with a claw. <laughs> I'll let this cool down and go get the other image with some powder on it. It has cooled down. Now I'm going to peel it really, really fast because I have found with DTF, it's best to do a fast peel. So I'm gonna just rip it off just like a band-aid. One, let's see. We'll do it from down here. One, two, three. <laughs> oh man, I did not get a good right there. Look at that. Oh man. Let's see. Dang it all. It's right there. Goodness. Hopefully when I press it again with the parchment paper, it's going to help it. So let's do it. Put the put the image right there again. Get the parchment paper. And we are going to press it again. Parchment paper takes it to the next level. Let's see. It's looking really, really good. <laughs> I can already tell you it's looking really, really good. Let me get my gloves. Keep the heat press on for the second one. Oh my gosh. That's, that looks really, really nice. Look at that. It's one little piece at the corner. I could fix that, I guess. I don't know. But that is that. And hopefully you think it's beautiful because I think it's beautiful. Okay, I probably need to press that maybe with parchment. Let's see if we can clear clean that up because that's kind of bugging me. Bugging me a little bit. Mm, cleaned it up a lot it cleaned it up a lot 
Okay, so this is the finished product. And I can hang this wherever I want to. I'll find a nice place to hang it in my home. And I will show you what it looks like. I think it's gorgeous. And I know, look at that. There's a little bit of, little bit of bubbles on the back. But I think it looks great. I'm going to do a better job of peeling that other one with my parents. Okay, the second image has sat under the heat plate. And I'm going to grab the big canvas. This is what the second one looks like. I think it looks fantastic. Let me grab the big canvas. Okay, here's the white canvas. This one has a place on the back where if you want to give it as a gift, you can write on it. I am going to pre-press this for about 10 seconds, same way I did with the other one. And let's try to get this one as centered as nicely as possible. This one will be easier to center because it's white. There's a lot of wiggle room. <laughs> that already looks fantastic. Look at that. Look at that. That is gorgeous. And my mom is going to love it. Let me let it cool down. Oh my gosh. All right, it is time to peel it fast. I'm going to peel it fast and complete. It is completely cooled down. It's not even warm. Okay, one, let's peel it from this side. One, two, Three. Ooh. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I did not do a good job, but that even adds to it. Look at this. But that's okay. I still love it. It looks great. She's going to love it. Okay, so now it's time to press it with the parchment paper. Remember, the parchment paper is the next level, right? We use the parchment paper to take our designs to the next level. Okay. I just feel like that part did not get um, pressed, and that's why that happened anyway. All right, so we will press this for about 10 to 15 seconds, and we will do what? Peel it and reveal it. Oh, that's been about 15 seconds. A heat press like this is perfect for this uh, project. Oh, I didn't pull it up. That is gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. Look, she is going to love it. My mom is going to do flips over this. Okay, so let me come around and give you my final thoughts about this. So even though they did not come out perfect, you already know I'm going to say I love it. I love this one and I also love this one. Let me give you my final thoughts. So hopefully you found this process helpful, this tutorial. Um, the things that I want you to know, number one, let the image cool down completely. Let the canvas cool down all the way before you um, remove the film from the canvas. So do that. Number two, make sure that when you peel it, you peel it fast and you peel it all the way. That was my mistake right here. I didn't get it all the way right there. Um, number three, I think it's important to have that border around the, the edge. I think, especially with this size, because my printer cannot print bigger than, um, the A3 size 
film. So make sure you do that. And then don't forget the parchment paper. So those are my four tips. Let it cool down, peel fast, um, parchment paper, and leave the border. Also, all of my canvases that are hanging up in my craft room, I use these right here. These are called adjustables. And I love these because they're super easy. And once you place the adjustable on the wall, if you decide within, I think, 30 minutes that that's not the right place for it, you can remove it and it'll still be sticky enough to put the um, canvas somewhere else. So I'm definitely going to be using these to place my canvas where I want them. Well, not the one for my mom. I'm going to give this one to her. But, oh, and last, last, last but not least, don't forget to remove the plastic before you press it. So some of these were wrapped in plastic and some of them were not. So remember to do that. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.